All right, buckle up. This is a busy news night. Now we start with crushing blows for the radical left and the destroyed Trump media. And according to reports, the deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, has told the president last Thursday he is not a target in the Mueller Russia probe or in the separate investigation into the president's personal attorney, Michael Cohn. Now, Rod Rosenstein reportedly voluntarily shared that information with the president during this meeting at the White House last Thursday. And this comes after President Trump shot down wild rumors and speculation that he will fire Robert Mueller and Rod Rosenstein. This has been going on for months. Now, these developments are good news for the president and a major setback for the conspiratorial media and liberal Democrats in this country. For over a year, they have been saying that there is major bombshell evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. One problem, it doesn't exist, and that's confirmed in force tonight. It's all been one big giant farce, total fabrication, conspiracy theory designed to smear and undermine and delegitimize the president of the United States. And as we are now seeing tonight, it continues to fall apart. Now, another key development we're following tonight, the president is now adding some very serious firepower to his legal team, former New York City mayor, former federal prosecutor Rudy Giuliani, and two Two other key attorneys have just been added. Now, Rudy Giuliani told the Washington Post that he is coming aboard because he hopes to, quote, negotiate an end to the Russian probe for the good of the country. I say amen, because the American people, all of you, deserve better than this. It's a crucial move, because as we've been telling you, Robert Mueller, his merry team of Democratic donors, they need to stop this ever-expanding insanity. Russian collusion now has become and evolved into Stormy Daniels. This madness has to end. And also tonight, the former FBI Deputy Director, Andrew McCabe, he is in some serious legal trouble. The DOJ Inspector General has issued a criminal referral for McCabe after finding that he lied under oath three times in an investigation about media leaks. Jim Comey, are you paying attention? Now, even though the evidence against him is overwhelming, well, McCabe's legal team is firing back with a statement that reads, quote, we are advised of, within, of the referral within the past few weeks, although we believe the referral is unjustified. The standard for an IG referral is very low. Now, we have already met with staff members from the U.S. Attorney's Office, and we are confident unless there is inappropriate pressure from high levels of the administration, the U.S. Attorney's Office will conclude that it should decline to prosecute. Here's the problem with that statement. The investigation into McCabe had nothing to do with President Trump. This is the DOJ inspector general. His name is Michael Horowitz. Get used to that name because you're going to hear a lot about it in the next few weeks. He independently reached the conclusion about McCabe lying, and he was appointed by President Obama. And this part is key. McCabe's old boss and his friend, James Comey, he's now admitting that he is the one that kickstarted the entire probe against Andrew McCabe, not Donald Trump. Now, Comey's also saying that he could end up being a witness in a possible criminal case against Andrew McCabe, his number two at the FBI. Look at this. If they ultimately bring a case against Andrew McCabe, uh, would you be a witness for the prosecution? Potentially. I don't know whether the reporting is accurate. I know it's CNN reporting, but I don't know it of my own accord. But sure, given that the IG's report reflects interactions that Andy McCabe had with me and other FBI senior executives, I could well be a witness. It looks like McCabe is clearly channel channeling his inner Hillary Clinton and pretending like there's some vast right-wing conspiracy out to get this guy. But it was his own friend, his boss, his number one. He was number two, James Comey. He's not sticking by him. Now, President Trump is weighing in on this on Twitter. He said, James Comey just threw Andrew McCabe under the bus. Inspector General's report on McCabe is a disaster for both of them getting a little lot of their own medicine. And speaking of Hillary Clinton, McCabe's growing legal exposure, this could be a very bad sign for her and other Obama deep state actors. Now, as we explained last night, nearly a dozen GOP lawmakers, they sent a criminal referral to the DOJ and the FBI demanding investigation into possible crimes committed by Clinton, James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Loretta Lynch, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, and other Obama-era officials. This is a massive story. Now, take a look at the side of your screen. These are the criminal charges that they are recommending for just James Comey. And they sent the letter to the FBI, the DOJ, and U.S. Attorney John Huber, laying
laying out a pretty damning case against the former FBI director as we warned him, don't write the book and don't go on a book tour. Now, they explain how Comey fixed the Clinton email investigation. Again, remember how long have we been telling you exoneration before interviewing Hillary Clinton and 17 other key witnesses? It doesn't work that way. And these lawmakers lay out how Comey gave conflicting testimony under oath, possibly even committing perjury, and admitted to having a friend leak the information about his memos to the New York Times, which in light of the Comey memos just released, he says, oh, I'm not sneaky, I'm not a leaker. Well, he admitted that he leaked. And the lawmakers are also referring criminal charges for Hillary Clinton over the scheme that she used, what, funneling over $12 million to Fusion GPS through a law firm, Perkins Coie, that then hired a foreign national. Remember, foreign nationals are bad, not supposed to influence our elections, Christopher Steele. And he's the one that used and created the unverified, uncorroborated dossier that was full of Russia and Russian government lies and propaganda, all in an effort to mislead you, the American people. People in the lead up to an election. Now, criminal charges are also being recommended by these lawmakers for former Attorney General Loretta Lynch threatening the Uranium One informant. He was on this show with reprisal. Anti Trump FBI lovers, Struck and Lisa Page, they're also being referred for criminal charges. Now, this congressional letter is also asking Andrew McCabe and other Obama deep state officials, those involved in the dossier, be investigated for possible criminal conduct. And finally tonight, James Comey's media circus is now turning into what is an unmitigated disaster for the disgraced former FBI director. Now, just this weekend, Comey was trashing President Trump to Clinton's sycophant, BFF George Stephanopoulos. Remember this. You write that President Trump is unethical, untethered to the truth. Is Donald Trump unfit to be president? Yes. But not in the way I often hear people talk about it. I don't buy the stuff about him being mentally incompetent or early stages of dementia. He strikes me as a person of above average intelligence who's tracking conversations and knows what's going on. I don't think he's medically unfit to be president. I think he's morally unfit to be president. A person who sees moral equivalence in Charlottesville, who talks about and treats women like they're pieces of meat, who lies constantly about matters big and small and insist the American people believe it, that person's not fit to be president of the United States. So after being called out for taking those petty, cheap shots, well, Comey, Comey all of a sudden, yeah, yeah uh-oh, he's beginning to change his tune. Take a look. You write that your experience in high school gave you a, quote, lifelong hatred for bullies. Do you, do you think President Trump is a bully, and do you hate him? I definitely don't hate him. There are things he does that make me uncomfortable and I think are inappropriate that are in some ways like a, a bully-like behavior, but I don't hate Donald Trump. I don't even dislike Donald Trump. All right, so Comey can't seem to make his mind up. Now, the guy spent the past year slamming President Trump, including mocking his appearance in every way imaginable, and now we're supposed to believe that Comey, when he tells us that, oh, he doesn't hate the president. Do you think we're that dumb? It is a massive contradiction for James Comey, but it's not the only confounding answer this guy is giving. Here's Comey claiming that he's never been asked if Hillary Clinton obstructed justice in her email case during a radio interview on WTOP in D.C. This is unbelievable. Take a listen. Why wouldn't smashing of cell phones and the destruction of thousands of emails during an investigation clearly be obstruction of justice? Now, that's a great question. That's the first time I've been asked that. And and the the answer is it would depend upon what the intent of the people doing it was. Lots of people smash their cell phones so they're not resold on the secondary market and your personal stuff ends up in somebody else's hands. But if you smash your cell phone knowing that investigators want it and that they've cut a subpoena for it, for example, that is a different thing and can be obstruction of justice. The law requires intent? Yes, it requires not just intent, but that prosecutors demonstrate corrupt intent. All right, seriously? He was never asked if Clinton and her team obstructed justice, really? Okay, try this. Subpoenaed emails, subpoenaed. Okay, imagine then if we have to worry about intent. After the subpoena, you delete 33,000 emails. You use acid wash, bleach pitch, which most Americans had never heard about. Then someone on your team smashes your mobile devices with a hammer. Seriously, after the subpoena, there's no intent? 
Good luck to any of you that try that with any court or any prosecutor in the country. Uh, I don't think it's going to work out well. Now, Comey is either totally and completely incompetent or he must think we're fools. Now, this is why so many people have been calling for an unbiased investigation into what Hillary Clinton has done here. Now, do we have equal justice under the law, equal application under the laws? Are we a constitutional republic?